host and this is my friend and colleague Taylor Downs and we are here for the Emily Post Institute How Do I live series that we do each week on our wonderful lunch break and we are here actually to talk about food and diets and dietary restrictions and allergies and all the complications that that creates for hosts and guests. Taylor, you are a vegetarian. I am. You are. I am kind of a flexitarian, so I mostly stick to a veggie and pescatarian diet. Occasionally, when it's just way too convenient or I'm just way too tempted, I'll eat meat. But um, it's funny how much our diets can actually separate and confuse us when eating is something that we do together all the time and it's where so much good etiquette and so much good connecting happens. Um, so we are hoping that you are going to bring us your questions, your stories, your thoughts on how hosts and guests can successfully deal with dietary restrictions and allergies when entertaining with one another. Um, so one of the first things that we wanted to talk about for our How Do I series today, and sorry, I'm just getting my notes ready, is the idea of the host guest dance. <laughs> and it's like, this is where it's either going to go really well or you're going to realize you're going to have difficult territory. Tell me something. When you get invited to a party, do you automatically let your host know your dietary restrictions, like your food preferences? Um, yeah, most of the time they will know. Sometimes I'll do a gentle reminder and in that reminder kind of add a, but I don't want to, you know, impose too much. I'm happy to bring something. My partner is also a vegetarian, so um, we'll kind of offer to bring a vegetarian option in that, op you know, Hey, just a heads up, a vegetarian plus, I could bring something if you want me to. Exactly. You want to think about the fact that the host's goal is to make sure his or her guests feel comfortable and welcome and taken care of in, in their home or at the event that they're hosting. And the guest's goal is really to um, positively participate in whatever the host has set up, um, but to also kind of take away any potential burden that you might put on your host. You don't want to be a really demanding guest when you go to someone's house for dinner. Um, you always want to be trying to make it easy for the host to entertain you and have fun and, and enjoy a good time together. So one of the things that uh, you need to do is have a conversation with one another. And you want to be open and honest, but coming at it with that air of consideration and thoughtfulness for the other person, that's what's going to make this easy. When it becomes difficult is when we start placing judgment or criticism in that moment, that invitation. Um, well, I know you're coming for Thanksgiving this year, but there is going to be a dead bird on the table. Will you be okay with that? Like, that is not the inviting way to have that conversation. Um, instead, you want to think of ways to make sure that there's going to be enough food for your guest. And as Taylor said, uh, it's really easy when that invitation happens to either bring it up as a reminder or, for a very first time, let your host know. So. Maybe uh, I've invited Taylor to dinner and it's the very first time that she would ever be coming over to my house. Um, I would say that my advice to you would be to feel confident when I say, hey, as a, as a host, first of all, let's get this right. As a host, first of all, I should be saying to you, Taylor, this is your first time coming over. I should ask you, do you have any dietary restrictions or allergies that I should know about before I make dinner for us? It gives Taylor the chance to say, why, yes, I do. I'm a vegetarian and I'm a vegetarian who eats, you know, eggs, but not cheese or something like that. And then what I love is it gives Taylor the opportunity to say, and this is where she tries to remove the burden from her host. She gets to say, would it be easier if I brought a dish for myself? And it gives the host the chance to then say, so I would love to, um, to accommodate you. I can absolutely make a vegetarian dish. Um, don't worry about it at all. Or let's say maybe you have a uh, celiac and cross contamination is a big issue for you. You could very easily say, you know, I am really nervous about cross contamination in my kitchen because I do use a lot of wheat. Um, would it be possible for you to bring a dish 
that way or I'd really like to take you up on your offer of bringing a dish that way um, you know you're really playing with realities here a host should never feel like they're entering into territory where they're uncomfortable or where safety is going to be a concern that's the point to really take a guest up on a dish mm -hmm. offer for sure Tell me something. Do you ever? I'm I'm new to the to the more restricted diet world. Um, oh no! I, I'm so sorry, Shelly. I wish it wasn't freezing. I hope it's fixing itself. Um, sorry. Uh, you are here with me. I'm Lizzie Post, and this is my coworker Taylor Downs, and we are doing our how do I? Excuse me. Our how do I Facebook Live series on food restrictions and allergies today. So please bring us your best food restriction and allergy questions. We were just talking about the host guest dance and how you might need to be able to kind of broach the topic with someone and be open to the level of commitment they're able to bring to whether you bring a dish or not. Mm -hmm. Do you ever get sick of feeling like you have to offer to bring a dish? Is that just like, do you just sometimes wish you could go to a party? Because I hear that a lot on the Awesome Etiquette podcast. People write in and say, I'm so sick of offering to bring a dish. Shouldn't my host just take care of my needs? What are your thoughts on that? I would say I've been fortunate in that almost every time that I've offered, the person has said, don't even worry about it. You know, we're going to take care of it. That's so um, nice. <laughs> and usually, you know, we'll still bring like an appetizer or something nice, but um most of the time they will say, oh no, don't worry. Um, the one thing that will come up is that they say, don't worry. And then when I get there, there's actually not a maybe bit. the, like there's side dishes, but there's not really a vegetarian option. There's a salad <laughs> and you're like, wow, salad. I love salad, but it's not always a full meal. Right. right? Which it comes up. <laughs> it does. It does. Another place that Taylor and I were discussing that dietary restrictions and allergies can be an issue is when you're deciding where to go out to dinner. So you might not be hosting at your home, but when you are dining with friends who you know have restrictions or allergies, really try and look at those menus. Think about what you know about the restaurant and their ability to accommodate any kind of restrictions and um, choose something that really has options for people. The worst thing is to sit down, let's say that you're gluten-free. Maybe you're not even allergic, but you just, a gluten-free diet really works for you and you enjoy it. It makes you feel good. So you sit down to a restaurant and it's really everything on the menu does have gluten in it, maybe except for that one salad or something like that. And it can just feel very restrictive. So you wanna think about selecting restaurants and, and uh, takeout places where you really do have options more than just one one vegetarian item or one gluten-free item. <laughs> yeah, um, something I've appreciated that people will do is maybe give a couple options like, oh, I was thinking of going here or here. Um, do you prefer one over the other for something that you can eat um, or that you're going to be able to find options? Um, it doesn't come as much up with vegetarian, I think, as it might with someone who is like celiacs, who um, the cross contamination is really an issue. So it is maybe best for the the person, maybe that's hosting everyone or arranging the get together to say, oh, you know, I know that you have celiacs. Is there are there places in town that you know you really trust and would want to go to? Yeah, um, that are really enjoyable. You want it to be a, a, again. The, the whole idea here is for both host and guest to have a good time together, for this to be a successful social gathering. And I think the more you can approach it with that attitude, um, the no matter what the circumstances, the better chance you have at making a success of it. I'm Lizzie Post and I'm with the Emily Post Institute. I'm here with my coworker, Taylor Downs, and we are talking about food allergies and restrictions for our How Do I Facebook Live series. Uh, please join us and send us your questions and your comments. We know this is a huge issue for people. One of the things that I have friends, and we recently talked about this on the Emily Post uh, podcast, uh, Awesome Etiquette, that uh, a friend of mine had written in talking about how it's really hard when she's in a new place getting to know people. She has celiac. She does not always want to divulge to a pretty much near stranger the details of what happens to her. And so one of the things that you should really consider when you're talking to someone and they might bring up that they have a food allergy or restriction is... Cue in, if this sounds medical right away, don't ask questions. They're personal. It's, you know, as soon as someone says, oh, well, it's a, you know, it affects my digestive system. Well, we all know that the things that affect our digestive system sometimes aren't pleasant to talk about. And they're also sometimes um, not things that people really feel comfortable sharing. So don't say, oh, so what happens? Is it really bad? 
God. You know, it's your curiosity mm -hmm. can be, um, I would say, entertained by Google really, really well. You don't have to put this person through describing their bowel movements to you. Um, I think that's where we just say, hey, it's time to back off and say, oh, okay. Well, you know, I hope there's lots of good things that you can enjoy here today or something like that. Um, you can always do positive, uh, or I would, I would actually say direct confrontation and say, that's not really something I'd like to discuss, but you know, I heard you talking about mountain biking earlier. Are there a lot of trails around here? A quick change of the conversation lets someone know we're not going to go any further with this. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Have you, what are some other issues we've encountered? Um, well, something similar is, um, you know, when you've maybe chosen to eat vegetarian or vegan or if you're like paleo or anything like that and then someone launching into maybe a debate with you about why you eat the way that you do and uh, maybe yes. wanting to not have, you know, be that spokesperson for everybody um, at all times. So <laughs> It's perfectly okay. I, you know, because I am kind of in that flexitarian category, I think people want you to either be vegetarian or be someone who eats mm -hmm. meat or be someone who eats dairy. And it's really nice to just say, I'm, I'm flexible with it, but I'm, I'm really comfortable making the choices when I do how I do. And that's just it. You can explain yourself. Um, a lot of people feel the need when they find out you are a vegetarian to then say to you um, something about like, oh, I just wish I could give up meat or, oh, it's so good to take care of the animals. And they'll get behind ethical or, or sometimes even health reasons for doing it. And I think you have to remember that it's really people's personal choice and that they might not want to launch into a big ethical discussion about um, their dietary choices. And so to just say, you know, oh, that's good to know. I'm glad I know that. Like, I won't be offering you a burger or something like that. Um, I think it makes it a lot easier rather than the judgment. Um, I think curiosity, I'm never too, I don't have a problem with. If someone asks me what my choices are, I say, you know, I did this because for health reasons, it, it made sense for me and it wound up working for me. I felt really good. Um, I always think it's nice when you do have a dietary restriction by choice and you uh, state it to someone else that you let them know that you don't harbor judgment about them for their dietary choices if they make a different choice for themselves, just like you wouldn't if you chose not to drink. Uh, you wouldn't want to, at a social gathering, put someone down for choosing to have a glass of wine. Um, I'm Lizzie Post and you are here for our How Do I How Do I Live series. I'm with Taylor Downs. She's a member of the Emily Post Institute, former intern, now member of the yes. Institute. <laughs> and uh, we are talking about dietary restrictions um, and allergies as well. Mm, good point. Yes, allergies definitely um, you want to pay close attention to them. Uh, really want to make sure that you are aware of all of the parameters around them. So if it is that nut allergy where just exposure to the air is a concern, obviously you're gonna wanna check that as a guest and double check it with your host before you come over. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the other concerns that people have here? Do we have, do we have any questions? Let Should me check. Should we check? Do you wanna check and see if we have any questions Absolutely. coming? Absolutely. <laughs> Um, we, I, I know personally, one of the things that I try to do is to not let it get to me when I know I don't have as many options as I wish I would have or that I would choose to provide for someone else. I think it's really hard when you make choices daily about your diet or you are required to make choices daily about your diet, um, to not put those on the people who are um, new to this experience for you. So for instance, um, if I have a friend who doesn't eat a lot of uh, vegetarian or maybe they don't eat a lot of gluten-free foods, it can, um, it can just slip their mind how many places gluten can be found or that they shouldn't use chicken broth when they make those dumplings or something like that. And it can be really uh, frustrating uh, as the person who wants to come to a dinner and really be able to enjoy everything, but you want to think safety first and you want to take care of yourself first. So oftentimes it's best to just ask the questions and if you don't have a good response, if someone says, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I forgot and I made that with this type of broth or that type of breading, um, try to be a gracious guest in that moment. No one was trying to push you out of the dinner. They weren't trying to punish you for the choices or the, the restrictions that you've had placed on your life. Um, I think you wanna say, 
that's a shame, but I will enjoy uh, the rest of the items that I can. Thank you so much for providing them. Um, you never want, you, you just never want that conversation to start to become laden with oh, grievance after grievance after grievance after grievance when the point of getting together was to have a good time with one another. Um, excuse me, my voice is starting to go just a little bit. Uh, let's see. One person was asking, how do you respond to rudeness in the moment? My family always makes fun of me at dinners for getting together, uh, or dinners, uh, dinners together for being a vegan. Um, no one should ever be making fun of you for your dietary choices. And I want to say that also for those who don't have, um, medical reasons for their dietary choices. If someone chooses to be gluten-free, let them be gluten-free. If their next fad diet is paleo, let them be paleo. It just, you know, what you choose to put in your body is really up to you. And it's up to you to monitor it and to figure out what works best for you. And your family and friends should not be putting you down for it. I would say that as the person choosing to make the restriction or who has the restriction, you should also really make sure that you are not overdoing it, that you are not judging people who choose not to have this restriction and that you're not um, making it demanding on other people. It's a choice you've made for yourself and therefore you really wanna try to not have that be difficult for the people around you. Um, I'm Lizzie Post and you're with the Emily Post Institute. We are talking about allergies and food restrictions for our How Do I Live series. Um, uh, let's see, we have a question. If you choose to bring a dish to a part of someone else's party, how much should you bring? Enough for everyone or just enough for you? This, I think, is a little bit up to you, and it's something that I might consider asking my host. Um, because in the one hand, you might just simply be providing a portion of a meal that you can eat. Um, and that's perfectly okay. I wouldn't look at it as rude to bring that kind of plateful for yourself to be taken care of. However, I would also uh, consider offering my host, hey, if you'd like me to bring a, a dish that meets my needs, I'm, you know, it's a wonderful vegetarian dish and could make a great side dish to the meal. Do you want me to make enough for everybody? It's certainly a generous and wonderful offer to make. It would allow for the portion of the meal that is for you to be shared by everyone else. And as we know, sharing meals is really a connective point for human beings. Um, we don't just fuel up. We don't just go kill something on our own and eat it. We have a whole uh, social construct to dining and it's pretty amazing. Um, let's see, Sherry's asking if the meal is buffet and you have purchased special meals for guests who have indicated dietary restrictions on their RSVP, how do you handle the distribution? I would say, um, probably having a little car, I, I love that you asked this question because buffet can be a really a, a, a difficult scenario for this. Either um, much like we were just discussing at a private dinner party, make enough for everyone. Just have that side dish really be available to everyone or that particular dish available to everyone. Or I would have a little card uh, that says something like, um, this dish reserved for, um, you know, this type of dietary restriction, like vegetarian. Um, this dish reserved for our vegetarian guests. Uh, please enjoy the other dishes that you're able to eat before uh, taking a taste of this. Or I would have those meals specially plated and brought to the folks and they can participate in what sections of the buffet that they can enjoy. Um, but that the food that's really been bought and provided for them uh, should be sort of protected as theirs. Um, I hope that that helps. <laughs> Thank you for asking the question, Sherry. Um, what about when there isn't a card or the situation is casual like pizza? Um, this is a great question on Awesome Etiquette. We had a, uh, we had a absolutely fabulous uh, discussion about pizza toppings and who gets rights to what slices if they're saying I don't care versus saying I only eat this or only like that. Really fun episode of the show. Um, I'm Lizzie Post and you are joining us for our How Do I Live series and we are talking about dietary restrictions and uh, food allergies and how to communicate them to your guests. Um, first, AE, the most lovely podcast. Thank you so much for saying that. I really appreciate it. Um, second, when interacting around kosher eaters and strict kosher eaters, sometimes a host must, and pardon me, I have to hit see more.
Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Around kosher eaters and strict kosher eaters, sometimes a host must ask more seemingly personal questions. What can I open, cut, prepare, and how do I help you? Thirdly, uh, thank you for tackling this. I'm a vegetarian and I often just eat salad and bread because there was meat and everything. Thanks again. No problem. Um, if you, as a kosher guest, I think offering the help is perfectly appropriate. Again, you'll just, your, your kosher host is going to know what to tell you. So trust in that. Um, and also trust in just that making an offer is a, a gracious and generous thing for a guest to do. So I would say make the offer and whatever your host decides to do, by all means, then um, then respect that. If they say, no, I'd really like you to go enjoy the party, uh, sit in the living room, enjoy the appetizers, go do that. Um, and if they say, oh, well, you'd have to do this, this, and this, and then we could get you started on cutting or prepping this, they just can't touch these other items and you have to use these knives or whatever it is that the restrictions imply. Um, but I think that making the offer is really that gracious place. Um, and if you are, uh, it's it sometimes, I would say kosher is one of those uh, dietary restrictions that it's less likely dependent on the, the, the level that kosher is kept, that you're going to be able to entertain kosher guests in a non-kosher kitchen. There's a lot of cross-contamination issues that can come up. So just really be aware um, of that when you're in a kosher home, that you want to be really respectful of um, of the use of everything because it takes quite a lot to, to get it to that level, I would imagine. Um, Let's see, what else do we have? What else do we have? Um, oh wait, going back to the pizza question. We said, I skipped it, sorry. Um, pizza is one of those where I do think it's really important to speak up and state, um, this sounds a little bit weird, but speak up and state actually what what you would like and how much of it you would like to be entitled to. Um, I often hear people when we gather at a place in Burlington called American Flatbread, they'll say things like, I can eat about four slices and I'd love something that has no meat on it. Or I can eat, you know, like half of one of those pizzas is perfect for me and uh, I'm allergic to peppers. I don't know, something like that. Um, but speaking up, letting it be known, I think also helps the table know about how much they need to order. Uh, vocalizing is great. Uh, I would try hard not to think that you have to demand your um, your uh, needs be met. They I, I trust that the the group together will meet your needs as long as you're voicing them. I think you want to have a really positive uh, light tone when you voice them. Like, hey guys, I'm vegetarian. I'd love it if like one or two of the pizzas could be um, vegetarian. Sarah Weiss says pizza is so cheap now. I just order my own and take home the leftovers. If financially you can do that, you're eating at a spot that's perfect. I think that's a great idea. Um, I love that. I love it when folks who, uh, have dietary restrictions or allergies are really confident about taking things into their own hands and taking control of their own needs. Um, as we all know, the world isn't always the most friendly or aware place. And rather than getting really frustrated or angry or taking that anger out on the people you're dining with, um, the more that you can take that deep breath and say, okay, this is just going to be one of those meals where I've got to really speak up for it or where, you know, my options might be a little more limited. It happens. I don't love it. I'm not asking everyone to be perfect every time. Um, I hope your friends will look out for you and support you. That's always the best. But standing up for yourself and knowing how you can uh, enjoy your time with people, even when difficulties around restrictions and allergies arise, is really, really important. Uh, Justin Trent wrote, hi, Lizzie, huge fan of the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I often have to go out to lunch and dinners with investors for my job. Our office is in Old Town, Alexandria. And uh, let's see, directly next to the water. With that being said, majority of the restaurants we... Ha, or we go to uh, have to go to our seafood. Here's the kicker. I'm deathly allergic to seafood and shellfish. I often have to bite the bullet and order bread or salad with no proteins, being scared of cross so cross contamination is an issue too. I don't want to make a scene or cause this issue. Are there any restaurants that don't have seafood at the waterfront? 
Um, you might even consider uh, finding some really great spots, maybe that have great views um, or that are in like uh, just, I'm trying to think of places that have like nice garden areas or beautiful atmosphere, even if it doesn't have a good view of outside, um, that might be places you can suggest otherwise for this very issue. Um, I would get more proactive about choosing restaurants that are going to work for you. Uh, I think your backup plan of knowing that when you have to bite the bullet and go to these restaurants that there are a couple things you can choose that are not likely to have cross-contamination. Very smart way to take care of yourself, Justin. And thank you so much for listening to the podcast. Um, it's, it is so hard when you just, you know you're going to be entering a situation where there just won't be very many options for you. And I, I try to enter that situation for myself by prepping ahead of time. I might eat an early lunch, Justin. That might be another thing that you could do. Um, or plan on eating afterwards if you can. Um, it's never a bad thing during a business meal to keep the focus on the business and not on the food. So I like the fact that you're not making a big deal about it, um, but instead just doing what you can for yourself in the moment. Um, hi, Jesse. Thanks so much. I'm so glad you love it. I, I feel like I'm all over the place today, but I'm glad, it, glad it's working. You've been on a special diet uh, for most of my adult life, and I've learned that it is more important to tell people what you can eat versus what you can't. I have heard this. This is a great tip that Jesse brings up. Eating, uh, Telling people what you can eat immediately lets them know what will be okay. When you tell people what you can't eat, then they're left to try to decipher what you can. So get them straight to the, the thing that's gonna serve you best, which is the foods that are going to be safe and, and comfortable for you to eat. I just wanna see if you have any more in there. Um, for example, for much of my life, I haven't been able to eat red meat or pork. So rather than that, I would say I can eat chicken, fish, duck, turkey. I found this helps hosts figure out what to serve. I love that and I love how it comes from such a place of consideration. It's trying Trying to allow your language and your conversation to be the most useful to the people who are involved. Awesome, Jesse. That is such a fabulous, fabulous um, comment. I also had uh, the other week we were talking dietary restrictions on awesome etiquette, and we were talking, someone had mentioned that they have celiac. And what they do is provide a little card. Um, and I've also heard from restaurants and chefs that actually a combination of these two ideas, a card that says what you can eat is very helpful to um, chefs in restaurants and they are getting more comfortable with people sending a little card back um, with the dupe ticket that says, you know, like here, um, this particular plate, these are the things that, can, that are okay. Um, so something you can always check with a restaurant, see if they accept that type of card or that, that type of interaction um, to help make sure that the dinner is safe. Most chefs are very grateful to have something that they know will please uh, the diner. So uh, take heart, don't think that it's a step too far. It's often a step in a very, very helpful direction. Um, this is fantastic. I'm loving all the interaction that everybody has going on. Um, again, you are joining us for the Emily Post Institute's How Do I uh, Facebook Live series. I'm Lizzie Post and we are talking about allergies and dietary restrictions. You like the idea of eating before? Awesome, Justin, good. I worry some people are like, no, I can't eat lunch that early in the day or oh, I'd be starving and not good at the meeting if I ate after. So I'm glad that one's gonna work for you. Um, and my hope is that you're going to be able to find some other restaurants to offer in the area that are really great places. Um, I'm trying to think, Taylor, what else can we talk about? What else have we thought about? What do you think? Come on back in, girl. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> um, you know, I think that's something that you've tied back a lot that's really great. It's just like not, of course, we're making it a big deal in this conversation because yes. we're focusing <laughs> on it, but... It doesn't need to be a big deal at the time of, you know, when you're eating or right. when, when you're um, preparing everything and kind of if you're in the type of maybe environment where people are like constantly referencing that, it can get a little trying on the people who maybe so aren't e eating certain things. So that reminder that, yes, like plan and plan for it beforehand, but don't make a big deal of it when it's happening. <laughs> I think so too, that a lot of, um, a lot of ways to help the conversation when you're making a new dietary change for yourself, um, or if one's been imposed on you medically, um, is to, to really be, 
be patient with your family, but I would also, sorry, talk about, don't run over your coworker's <laughs> foot with your chair. Um, but I would also, um, as a family member of someone who's making a change or a friend of someone who's making a change, I would try to be really aware and supportive. Um, I definitely, after almost a full year of being mostly vegetarian, pescatarian, was sometimes a little miffed at the questions I would get when I would go to a family gathering of, oh, are you like doing that vegetarian thing or something like that? And I think when you, when you, when you put that kind of questioning attitude on it, you know, diet, diets aren't easy to follow. They're not easy to follow when you choose to allow yourself to eat everything pretty much. So um, I think when someone places a restriction, please understand that that's a difficult thing to do. And you really want to be supportive of them in their efforts, especially if it's for health reasons or it's something that's making them feel better about themselves. You want to be supportive. Um, saying things like, oh, is that still a thing? I thought it was just going to be a phase. Or, oh, is this the latest trend? Um, some people, it's not so much a trend, it's taking them years to figure out what the element of their diet that was hurting them was. So be generous and be gracious and be patient um, as they make adjustments. Uh, you know, this year at Christmas, I just decided I my family wanted beef bourguignon. I wasn't going to try to make them do something different. Um, and I just enjoyed it with them in the way that I could enjoy it. And it was great. But you know, your your person with the restriction should always be trying to be flexible in the ways that they can, but the people around them should really try to be supportive and remember what it is that they're going through and the changes that they're making. Karina, hi! It's awesome to be face-to-face -face with the voice. I love awesome etiquette. Thank you so much! It's just, I love hearing that every time. We don't get sick of it. Um, and actually, next week the show is our 150th episode, so we hope you will join us in our wonderful celebration. Amazing! Yeah. Um, I want to keep this conversation going. Please continue to send us your questions about dietary restrictions and allergies. This is all the time that we have for today. Um, but check us out next week. We do our Facebook Lives every single Thursday at 1230 Eastern Time. Uh, next week topic, what are we doing? Parties. We're doing parties and actual etiquette at parties, right? Yeah. Good party etiquette for next week. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. My best friend just joined the conversation. <laughs> she lives in Africa. Africa. I miss her so much. She's getting married. We've been gawking over wedding dresses. Um, oh, sweetie, you are so kind. It's always amazing when a restaurant goes out of their way to accommodate your allergy or restriction. Uh, what is the best way to adequately thank them without making a big deal in front of others at the table, um, but so they keep it up and encouraging? Claude's, that is the best question ever. Um, reviews. I would say go online and go onto social media and post reviews. Let other uh, vegetarians, vegans, pescatarians, gluten-free folks know that this restaurant is kind to you and, and your fellow dietary restriction um, people and make sure that people know that they did a really great job. They made you feel good about it. That's probably the best thing that you that you can do. Claude, I'm so happy you're here. Um, and Renee, thank you on the 150. Congratulations. We really appreciate it. We're going to keep this little show going for forever um, as long as we possibly can. I want to thank you all so much for joining us. Again, I'm Lizzie Post. I'm from the Emily Post Institute. This is our Facebook Live How Do I series. Please send us suggestions for topics that you'd love to here we'd love to hear them we want this to work for you um and next week we're going to be talking party etiquette at uh 12 30 on thursday so please join us 12 30 eastern time perfect little lunch break session of etiquette and uh all getting together to try to help make the world a nicer place have a great day everybody take care bye-bye <laughs>